There's never been an oil spill in the Arctic Ocean off Alaska's pristine North Slope. However, that could change should the oil industry's current interest in offshore drilling become a reality. It's raising concerns because of the impact oil spills have had on other places, like across the state in Cordova. It's been a long time since anyone has hauled in a herring catch here. On the surface, Cordova is a tranquil town, but you don't have to dig too much to reveal its turbulent past. Cordova is about 160 miles east of Anchorage, nestled on the eastern end of Prince William Sound. R.J. Kopchak has called it home for over 35 years. I was part owner of a fisherman's co-op and uh, we were having bumper years. The value of permits was up, the value of salmon was way up, and we were all making 80 to 100,000 bucks a year working hard, but uh, there we went. The good times felt like they might just last forever, until one day in 1989. March what, 24th, uh, the tanker Valdez ran aground and, and uh, the world changed. Enough oil spilled from the Exxon Valdez tanker to cover 1,300 miles of coastline and 11,000 square miles of ocean. It was the worst environmental disaster in U.S. history up to that point. Countless numbers of animals and birds were killed from the toxic oil, and fish populations crashed, including herring. This driver of the economy, herring, no longer is there. The herring's gone. The big hit in the herring population also hit Kopchak hard. He calculates it cost him over half a million dollars. Today, Kopchak works for the nonprofit Prince William Sound Science Center. Scientists there study the Sound's ecosystem. That includes efforts to restore the herring population. It's been the parasites and disease both that they holding down population recovery. So While some fish and animal populations have made a return, much of the oil that was spilled into the sound was never recovered. So where is it? Oil can still be found in virtually every protected cove and beach uh, just under the surface. You just have to dig for it. It's a half hour float plane ride from Cordova across the sound to the marshes of Knight Island. So this particular area is known as the Death Marsh. And during the oil spill, it was really incredibly thick with oil and was a place where a lot of animals, birds, fish, otters, met their demise because of the oil. Just under the sand and dirt, there's a layer, a hard layer of oil. And you dig through it, the oil slowly sleep, seeps towards the place you made a hole. Hydraulically, the water pushes the oil into the hole. You can see the oil beginning to seep into this pit already. But let's see what we can dab. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's those that's thick. That's thick oil. Smells like a tar ball to me. I mean it is just still stinky, stinky stuff. It's these images that scare residents along the north slope. In the North Slope, one of the biggest questions is, what do we do if, with oil on or under ice? I think that that's one of the, one of the greatest challenges uh, up there, as well as the, the temperature extremes. Back at the Death Marsh, Kopchak points out once oil spills, it seems to stick around. It still amazes me that that stuff is still just right under the surface. No one knows exactly what risk the buried oil poses to the surrounding environment. What is known is that it will be around for a very long time. It's just tragic.